This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the third and the final lecture on activity-based costing, uh, chapter one of the lecture notes. Uh, and I, uh, what we've done, remember, we've done the example in terms of um, the traditional uh, approach, but then we redid it using a more modern approach, activity-based costing. And paragraph three uh, of the lecture notes um, uh, are asking about advantages of and problems with activity-based costing. Now, first of all, the advantages. I think very, very obvious. Well, sorry, I should never say that. But I think it should be clear from what we've done and what I've said in the previous two lectures that activity-based costing gives more accurate costings. However, just saying that on its own isn't enough. Because remember, at the end of the day, there is only one business. And at the end of the day, the total overheads are 190,000. Whichever approach we're using to get a cost per unit. So why does it matter that we've got more accurate costs per unit? It's the two reasons. Uh, one is surely the more accurate the costing is, we're able to set better selling prices. I said right from the beginning, you normally want to charge, obviously, more than cost. And so uh, if we get the cost per unit correct, then we know the selling price has to be higher. You see, um, perhaps I don't really need to say, but if you look back, oh dear, why am I doing it? Under activity based, I've added on traditional so that later I can compare. Uh, but under uh, activity-based, it's product C that's the problem. Since the cost is 23.63, we need to be charging more than that if we possibly can. Whereas, of course, if we were using traditional, ooh, the cost always seemed to be 17.84. We could charge a lot less. Well, that would be silly. In activity-based, A and B are okay. They are profitable. It's C. We need to up the price. Uh, alternatively, of course, it may be that the prices are rather forced on us. You know, if all the competitors are selling at $20, then perhaps we can't increase the price. Well, the other reason you need costings is you're able to make better decisions. in terms of profitability. You know, say if product C, if we're not able to increase the price and if we can't cut costs, then maybe the decision should be to stop making C because C is loss making. So all I'm getting at is simply saying more accurate costings in itself isn't enough. It's why does it matter that we've got the costs better? All right, now that may be the obvious advantage, more accurate costings, but there's another which actually is rather more important. Let me write it down first and then I'll explain what I mean. It focuses attention on what causes the overheads which can lead to cost savings. Now let me explain what I mean by that. 
with traditional costing, we just take total overheads, we do the arithmetic, uh, labour hours, and it was rather irrelevant where we were spending the money. But with activity-based, we look in each case, what is causing the overheads? And just look at, oh, which one shall I look at? Setups. Oh, sorry, no, look at deliveries received. 10, 10, 2. We worked out the cost per delivery. Uh, it was uh, it's the receiving cost. And we split it in that, on that basis, so 13,000 to the uh, 13,000 to B and uh, 2,700 to C, fine. But when you think of it on a unit basis, A and B, we're making huge numbers of units. You know, we're making 20,000 units of um, A. And so 13,640 divided by 20,000, it's costing 68 for each unit to receive. Whereas C, all right, we're only spending 2,728, but we're only making 2,000 units. And so 2728 spread over 2,000 units. That one's actually costing us 136 a unit. Which is one of the reasons why C ended up being the problem and costing so much more in terms of the overheads. And what, the reason it's happening, of course, is that C, we're only receiving we're only making 2,000 units, there are two deliveries, so it means we're getting 1,000 units each delivery. Whereas A, 20,000, 10 deliveries, we're getting 2,000 units each delivery. Well, maybe we should change the way we work. Maybe, instead of C, only having 1,000 units each delivery, and therefore needing two deliveries, what we could perhaps do is see if we can manage with fewer deliveries. Why don't we just have one delivery of 2,000? Maybe even A and B, we can cut down the number of deliveries by ordering bigger quantities. And if we do end up managing to have fewer deliveries, then maybe we don't need as many people involved in checking in the material being received. And if we don't need as many people involved, maybe we can end up having less overheads and cutting costs. And that's what I meant here, because activity-based forces us to think about um, what is actually causing that cost. Maybe we can manage that cost better, cut costs and be more profitable. Uh, the first company to use this, if I remember right, was uh, Texas Instruments, and they saved several million dollars implementing um, activity-based for exactly the reason I just said. So, there are the advantages. However, regardless of how much better it is, the problem in real life is it's not always easy to determine what causes an overhead. In the exam, no problem, we're told. But what about something like rent of the factory? That's an overhead. But you know, what causes the rent? Is it the size of each unit? You know, it starts to become a bit uh, rather impossible. So the real problem in practice, um, it's not always possible to determine the cost driver, i.e. what causes the cost, uh, and of course the exercise can be time consuming looking for cost drivers.
Uh, and so what tends to happen in real life, the sort of practical solution to that, is to go through the overheads and where there is an obvious cost driver, like the, uh, the were for each of the four in our question, then use activity based. So use ABC where possible. But any other overheads, like my example of rent, where we can't decide on a cost driver, it's just not feasible, then perhaps on the remainder, use traditional absorption. On the remaining overheads. Now, not your problem in the exam. I mean, you'll be told what to do. I'm talking about any discussion bits uh, here. Uh, that's what companies would tend to do to deal with that problem. So that's it. I hope all that did make sense. Um, I said at the beginning, have a look back through the note, you know, read page one, there's not much there, and check that it um, fits with what you thought I just said. Um, and also, you'll see at the end of the uh, chapter, when you have finished this chapter, you should take the online F5 MCQ test. Um, if you look on the F5 page, you'll find there are practice tests for each chapter. Just five short online, sorry, an online test of a short online test with five MCQs. Uh, have a go. Check that you've understood it uh, and that you get them right. Uh, if you don't, and if the explanations don't make sense, then obviously ask me as the tutor for them.